The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the July 23rd, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And of course, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more importantly than that, during this next hour, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-6648. Phone lines are open. If you can't call in, we've got you covered. Let those fingers do the walking. Yep, send me an email. Send it early. Steve at TFNN.com. Inside the subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question, of course, in our Tiger's Den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, all indices trading to the upside in the green. The uh, Dow's up 60 points, 27,232 is the print. S&P's up 9, NASDAQ up 10. That's about a quarter of a percent, uh, three-tenths percent, and about one-tenth of a percent uh, inside the NDX 100. Russell's to the upside by nearly six points. Semis, 11 points. They're leading the charge percentage-wise, about three-quarters of a percent to the upside. We'll try to take a look at that indice. Um, you've got gold off about... Uh, 550, silver is up seven pennies, light sweet crude down seven pennies out there. Lead the charge, the upside painting the town green. And mean up 8%. It is Sherwin Williams up 36 buckaroonies. New Oriental Education up uh, nearly 10 or nearly 10%. Biogen BIIB, that's uh, trading out at 241.84, up 4% or nine bucks. To the downside, it's double IPR Innovative Industrial down 13 bucks, nearly 12%. Chipotle CMG down. 11 bucks and change off one and a half percent arista networks a n e t down nearly four percent or about 11 buckaroonies out there so what do we want to look at i think let's go take a look at what's going on intraday just to give you a feel start with the es mini out here let's start with the 30 minute time frame chart in here so if you're wondering you know was there any signal this morning as the market as the es mini was moving higher uh, well the answer is yes See, when the ES Mini topped all the way back here, again, we're looking at a 30-minute chart. So when I say all the back, all the way back here, I'm referring to 9.30, 10 o'clock in the morning on July 19th. Today is the 23rd. That was a topping pattern led to a market move lower. Well, you got the same type of topping pattern that formed out here at 10 o'clock, 9.30 actually this morning. Nice little bullish, bearish engulfing candle, my apology. And, and it did what it was supposed to do. What does that mean? It gave an indication of a top and said there should be a pullback. And the pullback would be to where? Would be to support. Well, where is support? Well, if we just simply use where did price most recently break out, that's where price pulled back to. That was at the 2991 level. Now, let me just put this over the other chart over on the screen. It's a little cleaner. Um, I just wanted to be able to answer the question that somebody would have asked if I put this clean chart out here, which was, well, why did the ES Mini top where it did? Okay, voila, we got that answer. But this is a little bit clearer out here. And so when you see some type of top, 
the 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 you can't you can't well you can do whatever you want i'm just saying you can't think that that's the end of the world out there all you can think is that price is going to go back to support now many of you most of you don't have access or don't subscribe to the taz market profiles like i do because those are other tools that would help us identify what normally would be invisible support to our eye but any of you can do this and that's why we're taking a look at it. And it works just as great. You can see it in action out here. What do I mean? What is this? This is the Tom DeMarc setup nine count pattern. Look, folks, just subscribe to the newsletter. Go watch the archive of, of that and, and the other videos that are out there so that you can understand this pattern. I, it doesn't matter to me what time frame it is you trade because what I share with you here on a 30 minute works for all time frames out there. And you especially like to see it when it really is working. When you take a look at your instrument and your time frame, what it does, it helps you to understand it's kind of like sitting out on a surfboard on the ocean, trying to time the waves out here. You find the right timing, meaning the time frame that this tool is really working. And, and then you have something very reliable. So now what we know is price just simply bounce back to support moving below 29.91 sets up two other moves to the downside. Side, the next level be 29.86 and then 29.75. We're not there yet. Price just simply pulled back to support and held. That's on your ES mini. Now I'm not the same type of topping patterns were present inside the NQ. I'm not going to pull over the more mm, uh, traveled chart. I Meaning with all the tools, I'm just going to stay with the same thing out here. Here. So price made that same Rhodes momentum indicator top inside of the NQ. Now, when it made that, it was a big, huge, big, huge uh, bearish engulfing candle session out there, unlike the smaller one inside of the ES Mini. But still, price pulled back to, we can see these levels of breakout areas, support, where price just pulls back to the breakout area, 79.21 to 79.25 out there. So in, other, in order for the NQ to get to rolling, rocking and rolling to the downside, you need to see a close for two bars below 79.21 and a quarter. That brings up 78.94. Once 78, if 78.94 fails out there, then we're about 78.30. I don't have uh, the fourth bar written there, but we just can go down to the low of that TD setup nine count out there. There's two of them. You can see one about 78.50 and then another looks like about 78.30, 35, something along those lines. But at this stage, your support is held inside of the NQ. We take a look at the Dow Equity Futures contract. I don't make this stuff up. It just simply works. Take a look where price pulled back to. 27.201. That is where price on a 30-minute basis had broken out. Any close below that says 27, 129 to 138 would be the areas of support uh, inside the Dow Equity Futures contract. Let's go take a look at the Russell 2000. What did it do today during its pullback? Same kind of thing. Pulled right back to its breakout area. Its breakout area being the 1547.30 range. And that has held. That is what is going on on an intraday time frame for the equity futures contracts. But wait. We have more. We don't have to stop right there. We can go take a look at Goldilocks out here. I see a bit of chatter uh, conversation inside the Tiger's Den, the key level of support for the gold contract using a 30-minute time frame. And it's a beauty, folks. Take a look at this TD setup nine-count pattern. If you don't trade this and you're trading metals, gold specifically, you got to shake your head and say, well, why aren't you using this. Take a look at the bottom that formed out here at about two o'clock in the morning. That was with the TD setup nine count pattern. Take a look at the high, the spike high that took place at 1030 this morning. That was with the nine count pattern. Take a look where price pulled back to, pulled back to support. The green lines are resistance. You break through resistance says you go to the next level. You break through support says you go to the next level. 14, 18, 70. That's the number, my friends. That's the number to be watching for gold on a 30 minute basis. Stevie, Perseverance Roads, the TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So the only question in is, uh, could the VIX be poised to jump in the next 30 days out here? Here's uh, using here's the spot VIX index. Um, this is a 60-minute time frame. Of course, many of you that are old-time listeners know I don't like using a 60-minute time frame on an instrument that trades for six and a half hours. Just the bars aren't equal. But it is the time frame, as I've just during this break here, just tried to sift through to see which one is providing us the, the best support resistance uh, type zones out here. And the 60 minute was popped up. I would need to spend more time on that to better assist. And, and the reason is, 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 is I kind of take a look at uh, trading and investing and taking a look at the chart reading and, and all the tools that we that you and I use as um, as 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 a non-emotional way for us to understand what the markets are communicating, what buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I. And it's just by the numbers. And when we can just trade by the numbers, it makes things a whole lot easier. So utilizing these types of tools, you're not going to get the bottom tick or the top tick out there. But what you are going to begin to see are changes in trend for at least the time frames that you're taking a look at. So here on the 60 minute time frame, the reason that I say it's important to that this is this is a time frame that that showed up uh, as as one to pay attention to and to answer the question, would the VIX be poised to jump in the next 30 days? Well, if it's going to, for whatever time frame it is you can come up with utilizing this tool out here, what you will see is you will see resistance fail. Now, if we take a look at the spot volatility resistance are the green bars on my chart. Those are established by the TD setup nine count on the way down. Just take a look at 1641. Take a look at the move higher in the VIX. This was back on um, a few days ago. So this is on June 25th. Yeah, June 25th. Well, actually several days ago, uh, last month. 
But take a look at the spot volatility index. It moves up to 1641, finds resistance at that level. That's where resistance was. It was trying to also set up a nine count pattern. It never actually did because the high out there was bar number seven. So, Stevie, very technically oriented. It's, it's a rules based system. Just because it shows up in a nine count doesn't, in any event, so resistance there. Take a look at the next resistance point, 1464. When price, and it was established by that nine count to the downside back in the uh, 20 July 2nd out there. So, you had this little spike higher, uh, looks like at about 10.30 in the morning, so 9.30 to 10.30, makes sense, the first hour, back on the trading day of July the 9th, 14.64, that's it, and then price continued to move lower out here. Take a look at 14.11, in essence, it held with the TD setup nine count, that did identify top, price pulled back, did not pull back to support, that's 12.53, now look at where we're at right now on a 60-minute basis, we're in bar number nine, it'll remain in bar number nine, as long as price doesn't close um, above the uh, close of bar number five, about 13, I don't know, 1349, somewhere right around there. Uh, and it's forming this nine count, meaning going into the two o'clock time frame. It's only 121, but look for that level. Does that level hold the support? If you're asking the question and you believe that the VIX is poised to jump, then you would want to see 1253 hold the support. And ideally, what you'd like to see at two o'clock and then three o'clock, because in this case here, the nine count, the only confirmation on it, it could, the low in this case could be either bar number nine, because the one we're in, or it could be the bar following nine. But ideally, if the spot fix index is going to move higher on this 60-minute time frame, you'll certainly know by 3 o'clock, uh, well, really it would be 4 o'clock, right? Because let's say the 2 o'clock bar is what, what we're in. That's going to be bar number nine. Then you've got the 3 o'clock bar. Let's just say that's a lower low. And if the between 3 to 4 o'clock, the 4 o'clock bar is even lower, then this pattern will have failed, the nine count. But support still may have held out there. So let's just say you're in the mood to take a risk trade on the spot volatility index, trading, I don't know, whatever it is, TVIX, SV, whatever, the, whatever they are out there. Uh, then you want to see $12.53 sold. And then you want to see resistance fail, 1411, 1464, 1641. See, I could just go ahead and turn this to a 30-minute time frame out here because of the tool that I built that automatically show, you know, where those resistance lines are, where those support lines are. And as I say, the 60-minute time frame chart uh, just showed up on my screen as I just did some quick sift throughs, sift through, you know, new vernacular out there just to try to find some key levels of uh, support and resistance out there. So hopefully that helps to answer your question. Now on the daily basis, if you're going to ask me, hey, on a daily time frame, where is resistance? And I'm glad you asked out there. Well, now you know the answer. You know the answer. In order for the spot volatility, now that's quite a ways away from where we're at. If it's really going to get rocking and rolling to the downside, I'm sorry, the upside, which would also mean the S&P 500 is going to get rocking and rolling to the downside, you're going to see the spot VIX index take out $18.74. Now, it's possible we get another resistance level with the spot volatility index on a daily basis. Um, nah, I, I take that back. I take that back. I shouldn't have said that. I should have looked at the chart a little bit closer. 1874, folks, that is the uh, number as we speak right now. That's looking at a daily time frame for the spot volatility index using uh, Stevie's, well, really Tommy DeMarks, uh, TD setup nine count pattern. Let's go take a look at uh, market breath, market breath for the S&P 500 right now. We've got, um, and, and this is just in the last about four or five minutes, we've gotten a positive crossover. I don't know if this will be a positive crossover at the end of the day. What do I mean positive crossover? I mean, there's now 138 constituents inside of the S&P that are trading below the box. However, 148 trading above the top of their box. That's when we would see this crossover. So when we see this crossover, we can get into these little consolidation periods out here. We can see one back uh, right around the time period of the early uh, middle of uh, late March, March 21st to the 28th, before the market really made up its mind. We see another one back here in uh, November. Uh, before the market really made up its mind right around December the 5th and 6th out there. Uh, so at this stage, we have, again, it's really going to be an end-of-day reading out here. If there's a, cross, a positive cross, then what that would say to Stevie, what it would say to you, is you and I can then estimate, identify where price would head to for the ES Mini. Well, where is that, Steve-O? Very simple. 
it would likely head back to the top of its profile, which is 3023. It's a bearish structured box. It's the left-hand panel on my screen out there. But you also can see at about the 3005 level, there's a little descending trend line out here for the ES Mini. So price would really need to close above 3,550. I'm not talking another tick like 75 or so, uh, but really close above that uh, in order to say, hey, I'm going to go run up to 3023. So you can see the ES Mini up at resistance. The S&P is very close on its market breadth calculation. Inside the NQ, we can also see that's panel number two. You can see price right up at resistance as well, but it's got a bit stronger market breadth. Uh, this actually turned positive um, yesterday. Uh, on the close. Right now, there are 37 issues above the top of their profile, 24 below the bottom. Uh, in order for, and so that's bullish. It is a bullish setup right now. But back here, we can see resistance. So you can draw that same resistance line on the NQ. But still, resistance would only take you up to, I'm sorry, taking you above this positive market breadth says first you would need to close above that little downtrend line out there. But even by doing that, you've got another key level of resistance at 79.75. And then the ultimate resistance out here appears to be the brand new weekly profile that's trying to form. It's Stevie's advanced Doppler system. 8,001. 50. 50. 50 cent. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that we'll even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com.
This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, Alex writes in, says, hey, Steve. Hey, Alex. Uh, long NVR. Let's go ahead and pull up those uh, charts out here. We can take a look at the daily, weekly, monthly, and even quarterly uh, TAS market profile. So long NVR for much lower price. Does today's pullback on bad housing number change the uptrend? Uh, it has been in. So let's go take a look at it. So first, let's just understand uh, what's going on with regard to support levels, support and resistance levels uh, inside of NVR. Here's what we know. Uh, Alex, you don't like today's action, a brand new market profile that formed and a price is trading below the bottom of that 34.45. You're in essence at the low of the session. So uh, if a price closes below 34.45, that's going to be an indication of a, at least from a daily standpoint, a change in trend. Now, what you and I can do is we can pull this chart back. We can take a look at the bottoms of these boxes out here, um, you know, and how they typically act as support. Not always. There was a period of time out here on the trading day of May 23rd. You closed below, but then the following day was back up above and then below the following day. And then price really found resistance for a couple of more days out there until a new profile formed. And then price just simply moved above the top of that one. But so, you know, Trading below the bottom of the profile is a first indication of a change in trend. Of course, you'd want to see some type of topping pattern out there associated with that. Um, if we take a look at the weekly time frame, uh, the weekly time frame, what we know right now until we go take a look at our other charts, Alex, is that price is above the weekly profile. This would say support. Your next level of support would be the top of its box, 33.29 out there. And uh, possibly if it moves below that, then you're looking at 32 and a quarter to 31.18. Price is above the, um, above the monthly profile. If we just expand this out, though, you can see it's trading into resistance. What do you mean it's trading into resistance? And Steve, it's above the profile. I understand that, but you know, I'm also a um, a the way the market talks, walks, and squawks to Stevie is through the candlestick formation. And so here you had a bearish reversal candle in January of 2018. It was a key reversal session as well. Tells me that price is trading into resistance. That's your resistance. That's the high. That's probably the all-time high. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But it's at 3,700 even, Stephen, out there. Now that's what these charts and what they communicate to you and I. So was there a pattern on a daily basis that was as a warning shot to Alex with regard to, I'm assuming this was an earnings announcement, or, well, he was talking about housing data that came out here. Well, if you go take a look at uh, this, this formed a top two days ago with that TD set up eight count. Now, then yesterday was a lower high with the nine count. Now what price has done, to answer your question with regard to a change in trend, I would rely upon prices now just pulled back to where it most recently broke out. That's 33.70. Looks like that's pretty close to the uh, low of uh, today's session, but if you see a close below 3370, then that's going to be an indication to you, Alex, that uh, this may have in fact topped out or as pulling lower because just simply the pattern pulling back to support, no big deal. So if you're in the trade, you still stay in the trade, especially since you're in at a much lower price. But if you close below 3370, that says there is a problem in Reverse City. Now, what does the weekly time frame chart show us for NVR? So if we pull this over here, what we can see is price has been moving higher, doing it with less relative energy. That itself, if today, if not today, but if on Friday, you get that bearish reversal candle, which is what you've got right now, and you're trading below Stevie's green line out there, that says, okay, those daily profiles become your targets. 3118, 3224, obviously, the top of that box that we talked about, 3329. However, in this case here, this is a topping pattern. And we know that we're up towards resistance here on the weekly base. You can see the big old bear sash candle. And so this would say, be careful out here. Support on a weekly basis says this could pull back to 2602.20. So what do you do? Well, first, you almost got to wait for the week to play out. You put in a stop. Uh, you take a look at these different support levels, 3329, 32 and a quarter, 3118, and say if price got down there, you know, where are you at? Uh, are you okay? On the monthly time frame out here, well, we can see that price is also moving higher, doing it with less relative energy. But you need a monthly candle 
um, to uh, make a determination whether or not this is a potential top or not out here. So daily and weekly, Alex, are saying be careful with regard to ticker symbol NVR. Thanks for writing in. Hope all that information helps you out. No other questions that I see at the moment. So, so what are we going to do? What are we going to do? I'll tell you what we're going to do. I'm just simply going to make it up. We're going to go take a look at the sectors inside the S&P 500. So why would we do that? I, actually, I think it's a good thing to do. Well, one of the reasons that we would do that is we'd say, well, uh, hey, Steve-O, you were talking about the NVR, and it's a Rhodes Momentum Indicator top, just as the S&P 500 has the same thing. And the S&P 500 traded down 29.95. Of course, we looked at the market breadth of the S&P. It had turned just slightly positive. Uh, a crossover, bullish crossover, but we really won't know until the end of the trading session. And taking a look at the S&P 500, it could bounce up to Stevie's green line of 3,006 and still remain with the bearish pattern out here. So if the S&P 500 has given us a bearish signal, what's going on with the sectors? And voila, that's why I said, let's go take a look at the sectors, see what signals we can find out there. Now, that was a daily time frame. So let's go through each of the sectors. Let's take a and let's start with the uh, with the highest weighting sector, and that would be the XLK. Now, interestingly enough, we can see prices have been moving higher, doing less relative energy, but no bearish reversal candle. So it's just a warning sign, just a warning sign. However, what we can see is that today's move higher has generated wave number seven. The markets tend to sing in the key of G out here. And so we pay attention. So now inside the XLK, it has two topping signals. Now price has tested and rejected this morning Stevie's green line at 81.45, a key level of support. Another key level of support here would be 81 and 0.24. That's the top of its daily profile, the bottom 78.89. And if price were to close below 78.81, I'm not saying it is. If it does, though, it would signal to you a change in trend. Topping signal in place for the XLK, the number one weighted ETF inside the S&P 500. Healthcare sector may be number two, maybe number three. I've been updated these for the last couple of weeks, but we can see that it generated a topping pattern. It generated the rose momentum indicator topping pattern. It did that when that bear sash candle. This is the reason why Alex is going to pay attention to this pattern inside of NVR, why we want to pay attention to it with regard to the markets we trade and the time frames that we trade out here. Inside the healthcare sector, XLV, yeah, you've got a nice little bullish candle today. Does that mean anything to me? Nah, it's just kind of interesting. Why? Because there's no pattern that is in play out here. Now, we might be able to say, well, isn't there an A to B equals CD? Nah, not really. I'd really have to stretch it. What do you mean there's not an A to B equals CD? Well, here's the here's the only one that would really make any sense. You got an 85% retracement. Eh, I don't really like that. Almost too much of a retracement to say an A to B equals CD. Uh, somebody might say, well, can't you just uh, choose this set of swing points, the high out there, come down to this low. I don't have the trading day down at 91.98, but then I've got to use that same candle for the high. I don't really like doing that either. So uh, the bullish and bearish reversal signals are nothing you can just trade off of. They must be, must, M-U-S-T, must be combined with patterns out there. Otherwise, you're trading with your hands tied behind your behind. And you don't want a behind. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period.
$50,000 investment in a Tiger First mortgage program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we were about to go look at the XLF, the third sector inside the S&P 500, but Tim wants to go take a look at KRE, which is the S&P Regional Banking ETF out there. And his question is, does it look like KRE is bottom? And what is a good entry price? So it really depends upon the time frame uh, that uh, we're looking at. Here's the market profiles. You're trading just slightly above the uh, daily profile at 5302. You're trading with inside the weekly. It says the consolidation out here between 5187, 5671 uh, out there. The uh, monthly, you're trading right into what could be resistance, the center of its box at 5427. So let's go in reverse order out here. Let's take a look at the monthly time frame chart using Stevie's other tools. And you can see the major top that was formed out here, the major top with both the Rose Momentum Indicator top, the bearish engulfing candle, back it looks like in uh, June of 2018. That also was a TD setup nine count pattern out there. So you got two, two for the price of one, and then price pulled back to where it should have, which was the uh, breakout level. That was at 49.31. We got below that, but again, you need to see two candle sessions. This is a monthly chart. Very next candle session bounced above that, but price is below Stevie's green line out here that's resistance so has this bottomed you've got resistance at 56.68 at a minimum you're trading at 53.28 i don't think that's a very good reward risk trade on kre out here so i'd have to say sit tight again that's just looking at the longer term chart because what we could have out here could can't say that we do but what you could have is an a to b equals cd to the downside that is setting up and so if you're asking for a good entry point, well, the one-to-one -one A to B equals CD takes you down to about 3543. Let's get rid of that. What else is it about in the 3543 level? That's the next breakout level. Whoops, sorry about that. Let me do that. Uh, which is at 3529. So longer term, I'm going to say uh, you need to hold your horses, so to speak. But maybe you're not talking uh, long term out here. Maybe you're not talking long term. Maybe you're talking uh, shorter term. You're looking at a daily time frame chart. And 
You know, I just see a bunch of sideways action. Look, there was an A to B equals CD to the downside. It didn't get all the way down there to 49.42. That formed with this bullish engulfing candle. Remember, we use those A to B equals CD uh, as um, guidelines, not necessarily that they have to hit exactly. So you did get a completed A to B equals CD pattern with that bullish reversal signal on June 4th and the gap higher the very next day. But really, it hasn't gone much. If you had gotten in on the very next day, and you did it at the close or something, you're at 52.60. This is at 53.31. It's just not interesting, Tim, is the way that I see it. And when we take a look at the longer term uh, chart pattern that is out there, I think it becomes uh, maybe a bit dangerous out there. Of course, you could say that everything is dangerous. So let's go back and take a look at the. So thanks for writing in. Let's go back, take a look at the, um, at the other sectors inside the S&P 500, get a feel for what they're doing. Let's skip over the XLF. I mean, I'll show it up here on the screen out here. It's worthwhile at least to take a look at. Here you can see maybe this is on its way to completing its one-to-one -one A to B equal CD to the upside in the 2858 area. Just like, uh, so uh, it's, you're trading above Stevie's green line. It's trading right into the top of its daily profile, which looks like it's right around, well, let me not say looks like, let me just do this here. Let me pull up the XLF. It'll be easier to read because I've got a data box. And so the top of its uh, daily profile that it's trading into, this resistance is 2830. 2830 for the XLF. Let's go take a look at the XLC. XLC, I believe, has got companies like Facebook, um, social media type stocks out there. Um, this formed a TD setup nine count and then price did what? It pulled right back to where it was supposed to. The breakout level at the 49.43 yesterday generates a hammer candle. Now, the beauty about this is um, if you see it close below yesterday's low, and more specifically below 49.43, uh, then you know, because if you see it close below the bottom of a hammer candle, says if you're long, you're wrong. So the XLC could be setting up. It's trading below Stevie's green line out there, as well as the bottom of its daily box out here. Um, if this uh, gets below 49.43, there's another leg down. It'll set up an A to B equal CD to the downside. More importantly, price would likely head down to 46.97. So the XLC, XLC has a topping pattern that's in play out here. Uh, how about the XLY? If we take a look at it, what's its signals? I don't have a signal. You know, even the A to B equals CD just visually looks like it's uh, too far away to be able to call that completed. Yeah, that's, that's way too far away to call that completed. Um, so I don't have a topping pattern here inside the XLY. Just not there. I'm not going to make it up. At least the topping signals and patterns that you and I use out here. Let's go take a look at the industrial sector, XLI out here. What does this look like? Um, uh, price pulled back today, tested 77.82. I don't have a topping pattern out here uh, for it. I mean, maybe there's a topping pattern. Well, I mean, there is this little three drive, looks like a three drive to a top pattern out here. I'm not going to worry about catching the exact uh, bottoms and tops and ticks out there. So I take that back. There is a valid topping pattern inside the industrials, the XLI. It's that three drive to a top confirmed by that bear sash candle. But it looks like this still wants to rally as long as it continues to trade above 77.81. Let's go on to the next sector. Let's go into the, um, uh, the uh, XLP. The XLP consumer staples, this form two days ago, wave number seven, letter number G on our system. We know that that is a, uh, a signal of a potential top price just traded into Stevie's green line on the top of its daily profile out here. This would need to close below 59.17 to send you a message that it's headed to 56.48. But the XLP topped two days ago or generated a topping signal, a confirmed one. How about the energy sector out here? What is it doing? As we take a look at the energy sector, no topping pattern that I have in play. Price is trading below the bottom of its profile at 63.56, just really more so consolidating sideways than anything else, but nothing breaking out to the upside. How about the utility sector? What do we have going on inside the utility sector out here? No real topping pattern with the exception price trading below the bottom of its daily profile, 68.18. That could open up the door for 57.70 inside the XLU. Let's finish off the last two charts out here. The, the uh, uh, building sector the XLB uh, today making a uh, wave number six that's letter F 
on my screen out here. No, they're topping pattern. Maybe this generates a topping pattern wave number G, letter number G, um, out here Thursday, Thursday or Friday. Not saying it will, saying that's what I would be paying attention to. And finally, the real estate sector. What is this doing? I don't have the topping signal. The price appears to be pulling back to 36.10, where this had broken out. We say that because price is trading below the bottom of its bullish structure profile, which it broke through four days ago, one, two, three days ago. That should have held the support. It didn't. So this is likely pulling back to its breakout area, which is 36.10. Voila. There you go. So what do we conclude out here? We conclude we have a number of topping signals and things inside the S&P 500 suggesting that they're headed lower, not higher. Very, very interesting. Yeah, that's all I've got. I'm taking a look at the uh, descending trend lines as well for the futures for the ES, the NQ, the uh, Russell 2000, and the Dow. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien published the 900th issue of his weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, on July 22nd. It's amazing he started The Gold Report more than 17 years ago when gold was trading at only $252. To celebrate, we're having a special Tiger Dollar sale. Right now, you can spend only $495 and we'll give you 200 extra Tiger Dollars. So you'll end up with 695 Tiger Dollars, which is the yearly price of The Gold Report. Tiger Dollars can be used for any TFNN newsletter or service, and this offer is open to new and current subscribers. With gold making six-year highs and gold mining equities trading higher, this is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report at a dramatic savings. For all the details, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This deal ends July 31st, so don't miss out. Get your Tiger Dollars and sign up today for the Gold Report 900th issue sale. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Dow's up 143, S&P 15. Uh, the, uh, looks like the final question of the day coming in from LB. Lee writes in, says, hey, Steve, uh, can you give me your thoughts on going long on dust? 
Uh, they hit a 52-week low this morning and thinking the GDX is overextended. So I, I wouldn't take a trade based on the fact that it's at a 52-week low or that it might be overextended. But we will go take a look at dust, and I'll give you the chart patterns that are present. But those would not be the chart pattern reasons why I would take the trade, because I'm a pattern guy, because I believe that the market communicates to you and I, and if we just pay attention to the numbers and the patterns, then at least it gives us an edge. And that's what the market, that's what we're always looking for, some kind of edge. You know, is the market communicating to you and I? Remember, everything happens for us, not to us. So perhaps dust is happening for you, Lee, because even though you uh, wanted to take a look at it because of 52-week low and it's overextended, it is extended, but it's extended using that rose momentum indicator signal. And so prices have been moving lower, doing less relative weakness. And right now, as of 155, you've got a bullish engulfing candle confirming that pattern. Price is trading above Stevie's green a red line, 807. And uh, you exceeded both last yesterday's high and low so you've got a key reversal session what i don't know lee is what does this candle look like at day's end but if it does look like this bullish engulfing if it just one tick to the upside that would confirm the key reversal session and you want to go ahead and uh, take a trade in uh, dust i cannot find reasons for you to not do that other than use a stop Whereas we had a caller last week wanted to go take a, a trade in dust, and I said, you can't do that. You can't do it because we don't have any confirmed patterns. And as we speak right now, you're getting a confirmed pattern in dusty roads, D-U-S-T. Folks, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for all the uh, email questions out there. Always great to be with you. But stay tuned. Another great hour brought to you by David White the favorite polar bear. In fact, I think he got a raise today because Coca-Cola is at a new all-time high. And aren't they the ones paying him royalties for being P-O-L-R? I believe so. Hey, have a great Tuesday. We'll look forward to seeing you on Wonderful Wednesday. Thanks for being here.